Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Change. If it's Tuesday, that can mean only one thing. Dwayne Long has joined us. Dwayne, our long national nightmare is over. College football normalcy returns today. Recruits are allowed on campus. We were just alerted that the media will be allowed at camps. Hallelujah, Dwayne. Hell yes. I mean, this is getting back to normal, and uh, you just love the access. I mean, you, you actually get to go and look at these players yourself instead of just waiting on your contacts to, to let you know. And, and this, this is outstanding, and I love that they're doing this. It's just like everybody saying, come on, man, let's get, let's, let's get, get it going again. So we are ecstatic about what's going on, and we were going to have a complete rundown for you of what you can expect in the month of June. First, know this. If you are not a premium member, now is the day to do it. We have a limited time offer for you to get on board. 60% off for an annual. You're getting 60% of the year for free. We'll be well into the season before you start paying a dime, and you can follow all the recruiting for this month and forward. It is going to be fast and furious. And for those of you who do follow it, know this. Most of the good recruiting information that you find on these sites, and our site in particular, is premium. Also, know this. The media is now allowed at camps. We did not find that out until right before we went on the air today. That means Bill Curlick and his posse will be there with bells on. There's even camps tomorrow, a big guy camp at 9 a.m. and some more stuff. So we will be there. That is great news because the visits are coming fast and furious. Dwayne and I are going to go down the list of the month of June and pick out guys on certain dates that you should pay attention to going forward. But first, Dwayne, we first need to discuss Ohio State's future and why it is so friggin' bright. Two huge reasons. One, C.J. Stroud. Two, Quinn Ewers. Those are likely your quarterbacks for the next X years. Both were at the Steve Clarkson retreat over the weekend in Santa Monica, California. It is essentially like the Elite 11, a gathering of the best prep quarterbacks in the country, along with College quarterbacks who serve as counselors on the college scene. You had your C.J. Strauss, your D.J. Ugalele, Bryce Young, Graham Mertz from Wisconsin, etc. Quinn Ewers was named the alpha dog. We just looked at the tape together. If you're ever feeling bad about yourself or your team, go look at some Quinn Ewers film. I'll just put it to you this way. When they went for quotes about him, one of the quotes was, he throws the ball a lot like Pat Mahomes. That quote came from Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. You know when you're getting compliments like that from guys you'd likely have to go through for a title, you are legit. Please brag about what you saw from Quinn Ewers. How did he get that much better under the circumstances? I mean, you look at his, his, his high school film, and you're like, man, this kid, he's, he, you could see why everyone's talking about him. He's special. But this film... Buckeye Nation, you have to go to the front page and look at this. Look at this link to this film and watch this kid throw the football so effortlessly on target at any angle, you know, running left and throwing back right. It, it's just you, you got to go see this. You got to watch it. It will make your, your week, your month watching this film. He's that good. And how? What was he doing? To improve that much with all the broke up COVID stuff, what in the world? He's doing something right. If you watch the video too, uh, the Mahomes comparison is apt in that arm. It's just he does his feet don't need to be connected to his arm for him to make throws that are just staggering. If you're looking for other reasons to feel good about it, Greg Biggins was there, one of the best at 24-7, and his comments were that Ewers is just the alpha dog. He took this, he took the event more seriously than the other guys. He's the clear leader in every group. You know, adding to that, a lot of the college guys didn't throw so much, but Biggins did say the college quarterback that impressed him the most there was C.J. Stroud. He has very much filled out, made a lot of NFL-type throws and some seven-on-seven work, and Biggins named him as the guy to watch going forward and possibly as a breakout player for the fall. We're going to take a quick break, come back, talk recruiting. All right, we are back. It is June 1st. There are visitors coming today. So Dwayne and I are going to go through the list. Just some guys to whet your appetite here. The list is long and furious. Today, they will get visits from two guys we want to talk about. 
those aren't the only two guys visiting, by the way. One, Luke Montgomery, class of 2023 from Ohio. And then defensive lineman Kristen Miller from Georgia, a defensive lineman, 2022, your vibes. Luke Montgomery falls into the category must-have as far as I'm concerned. They, they've got him as an offensive lineman, and I don't get it. He plays – he's great defensive lineman, and it's not like he's already 285, 290. He's a 260-pound kid. Why can't he, he be, slide down inside a tackle? Watch his film. Kid's outstanding outstanding athlete he moves so well i mean and he, he's explosive he's got all the tools i don't know why you wouldn't at least try him first on defense if he grows into an offensive lineman fine he's great on offense too but this is this kid falls into he's an ohio kid and he is just you know you want to get these bigs it's hugely important to get athletic big guys and so you got to keep him home. Miller, uh, I got to tell you, Dan, I, I watch his film and I, that what I use this expression soup sandwich. That's he's, he stands up as soon as the ball snap, he doesn't fire out. He stands straight up. I didn't, he's not explosive. I, I don't understand the fuss about him. I mean, uh, you know, big body and, and he's pretty athletic, but I, I, uh, uh, if he he's probably going to stay home like all the big guys do uh, the the defensive tackles in the south are all from the south and they all stay home but i didn't i just can't get excited about that guy after watching this film and i watched it twice to you know make sure he just didn't impress me june 2nd he does not have to make a long trip down the road but sunny styles lorenzo styles son will be there styles a safety athlete linebacker from pickerington he actually plays select basketball with a kid from my son's high school team. And they just say he's the best dude you ever want to meet. And he is a man among boys. I'm told from a physical perspective, even among the elite basketball players, your thoughts on Sonny styles. He's just, he is a special athlete. You watch him. I've seen basketball film of him, uh, football film. I think he's going to be uh, more like his dad. You know, his older brother who, who chose Notre Dame, uh, more of a skill guy. I, I think Styles is going to grow into a linebacker. And he looks like he might be a great fit for that bullet that, uh, that is going to be a staple of our defense now. And, and he falls into the must-have category, too. you got to keep the super athletes at home. And it goes without saying, when you have a five-star caliber talent within 100 miles of Ohio State's campus, you need to get them. One guy you want to keep an eye on. Class of 2023, June 2nd visitor, quarterback Nicholas Iomaleva. Uh, Steve Wolfong told me this is what he thinks might be the guy Ohio State really focuses on in 2023. Don't forget, they had an offer out to Malachi Nelson. That's the only quarterback they've offered in the class, and it looks like he's headed elsewhere. But I'm told Iomaleva is the one to watch. So whatever coverage we get out of that, he's a guy you want to definitely keep an eye on. All right, Dwayne, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here. June 7th. Class of 2022, in-state offensive lineman Ryan Bear from Eastlake. It seems like he's really on the verge of getting an offer. Some think he will, some think he won't. What's your thoughts? I'm, I'm on the fence. I think he could. And here's, here's a very important point. This offensive line class is not impressing me. So you got an Ohio kid that wants to be a Buckeye. And he's, and he's right there. All you got to do is offer him. I bet he accepts on the spot. And it isn't like we got uh, that many guys. I, I know we've got a list, but I'm just looking at these guys and I'm going, they're that much better than him? I don't think so. I'm just not seeing it. So I'm not going to be surprised. He needs to come in focused. He needs to be ready. He needs to, to go at it like a fighter goes at a fight. Beat For that particular night, I got to be on. June 7th, Ryan Bear needs to come in here and be the best that he can be. And I'm not going to be surprised at all that he gets an offer. It definitely fits the mold of a local guy getting a camp offer in terms of his trajectory. So we will keep a firm eye on that one. June 8th, another local guy comes in, offensive lineman Josh Padilla from Wayne. You've got Cameron Edge, a quarterback, and wide receiver Carnell Tate, who I know is high on their board. But you wanted to talk about defensive lineman Hero Canoe. Hero Canoe. This kid, he's a German kid. He's from Germany. He's now in California. 
and going going go to high school out there. I'm telling you, I, I looked and I was. They showed him number 21 defensive lineman in the country. I, no, no, he's not. He's at least top 10, and he is not a Southern kid, and he doesn't really have any connection to any school. He's he's a German kid. I don't know how long he's been here. hadn't been very long at all. So going out there and getting that kid, he is incredible. Six foot five. They, they list him at two ninety three. He looks like he's uh, two sixty five, and he runs like he's two forty. He uses his hands great. Just it, that short area speed that is absolutely essential to linemen. He hits. He's going to hit you hard and quick. He's by him, and he's he's after the back of the quarterback. This is a kid we really should focus on. It's just so, you know, we, we don't have to, Dan and I don't have to tell you that <laughs> getting those those bigs out of the South is just, it's like pulling teeth. You, you just can't get them out of there. So this kid with no connection like that, no regional connection, no local connection even, going out there and getting him to come to Ohio State, it would be huge. He can play strong side end. He can play uh, three technique. This is a special athlete. If you go watch his film, you will you will be impressed. He also has the best name of the group, Hero Canoe. You cannot do any better than H-E-R-O-K-A-N-U. All right, June 9th, class of 2022, defensive lineman Shamar Stewart will be in town. If you could pull that kid, I just watched his film about an hour ago. He is special, absolutely special. If you could, if we could get him, oh my goodness, that'd be huge just huge but i just don't have a lot of faith that uh, i was going to say us but anybody can get these kids to leave the south and and come north come west it, whatever they just don't want to that would be a massive gift this guy's he's a really special defensive lineman a, another kid that could be strong side in or slide down to defensive tackle but i think he's going to be a strong side in going to have to be a larry johnson special there all right june 11th through the 13th Two guys from South Lake Carroll High School, Quinn Ewers and wide receiver Landon Sampson will be in town together. Sampson is Ewers' go-to guy. And Mark Porter did a review of him. The response we got was mostly favorable. I'll tell you what, I think when all is said and done, Landon Sampson will be a Buckeye. Your thoughts? I like him. I, I think, you know, he caught 75 balls and, and that comfort that comes from throwing to that guy could be wonders could do wonders for viewers when he first comes in. And, you know, he's not that super athlete that, uh, uh, Julian Fleming, uh, Egbuka, you know, that kind of guy, he's just a receiver. He gets open. I love how he gets off the line of scrimmage. That's huge. I've heard Chris Carter say this before that when you see receivers go to the NFL, drafted high and they fail it's usually because they can't get off the line of scrimmage this kid gets off the line of scrimmage he runs patterns already i i don't know if he's going to get an offer june 11th to 13th but come january if he's still if he's patient and we've gone through you know the guys that are higher on our board i'm not going to be surprised at all either dan that, that he gets an offer. There's a lot of good receiver right there. Runs an 11 uh, flat uh, 40, uh, 100. So it isn't like he's he's slow. He's six foot one. I'm not going to be surprised at all if we see that kid wearing scarlet and gray. Another Texan you want to keep an eye on, June 15th, running back Reuben Owens, class of 2023, does not have an offer yet. He is verbally committed to Texas, but he is visiting Ohio State. I am told if he has the camp they expect, he will get an offer. So Reuben Owens is definitely one to watch on June 15th. Let's finish with this. June 22nd is an enormous day. Tons of dudes. You may see a quarterback of the future there in Jaden Davis. There's also Peyton Kirkland, wide receiver Braylon James. Your thoughts on June 22nd? <laughs> like you said, that's huge. You, who knows how many offers are going to come out of that? How many, uh, if anybody's going to accept? I'd really like to see uh, uh, Malik Bryant um, show well in that uh, in that, and and I want to see Braylon James. Uh, I'm I'm hoping to hear uh, good things about that. Jaden Davis, he's a 2024 kid, and he's coming in that that uh, for that camp. 
that says something. A kid that young is already getting invited to camps. So he's definitely going to be one that we want to watch. And we got to pay attention to these quarterbacks, Dan, because you know we're going to lose at least one, if not two, quarterbacks between Stroud and Ewers. So we need to be uh, uh, on our game, making sure we, we keep, in, uh, keep in good shape with these quarterbacks in the future here because we're going to need one or two uh, very soon, I think. If you've made it this far in the podcast and you are not a premium subscriber, you need to go do that right now. 60% off. That's three-fifths of the year. You don't got to pay. We are going to have more coverage of recruiting and visits this month maybe than ever in the history of the site. I don't know if you know this. There's been a pandemic and a backlog of visitors. We are happy to greet them. We hope you enjoyed the show. Have a good one, Bucknutters. Bucknutters.